Hello children, welcoming you all back to another wonderful session of amazing world of uh, science where we do NCERT line to line for classes 8 to 12 and we specially focus on classes 10 and 12 and at the same time we are also doing classes 9 and 11 and uh, later on we will be starting with classes 8 NCRT science. So, all of you know that we were doing uh, NCRT class 9 chapter 2 is matter around us pure and we have already completed the uh, major part of the lesson and uh, today we are going to uh, do physical and chemical changes. So, I hope uh, those of you who have not watched the previous sessions can go back to the videos and watch the previous parts of the lesson. Okay. Now, I hope uh, you have understood the concepts uh, so far clearly. Today we will do physical and chemical change. Uh, this is a very easy and important concept because this is the basis of what we have to learn in uh, chemistry uh, in further uh, higher classes uh, as well as physics also. This is an important topic. So, let us get along with uh, what is meant with physical and chemical changes. So, to understand the difference between a pure substance and a mixture, let us understand the difference between a physical change and chemical change. So, only if you know about physical and chemical change, you can understand the difference between already we have learnt about pure substances and mixture. So, and also you uh, learnt a few physical properties of matter that is uh, the properties which you can observe like color, hardness, rigidity, fluidity. Fluidity means the tendency to flow, density, melting point, boiling point, so many physical properties are there. And interconversion of states is physical change because the changes occur without a change in composition and no change in chemical nature of the substance. So, for example, if you take ice, water and water paper, they all look different and their physical properties are also different. See, ice is a solid, water is a liquid and water vapor is a vapor, but uh, their composition it is chemically the same. Okay. And, uh, but now take the case of water and cooking oil. See, these two water, cooking oil, both are liquids, but their chemical properties will differ. Their odor, their smell is different, their inflammability will be different. You know that oil will burn in air, but water will turn off or extinguish fire. So, uh, what about the chemical property of oil uh, that is which makes it different from water? You know, burning is a chemical change. Substances burn. See, for example, if you uh, burn paper, it will change into ashes, but you cannot get the paper back from the uh, ashes because uh, chemical property or chemical change is a permanent change. Physical change is a temporary change. See, for example, uh, for another example for physical changes, see, suppose you stretch a rubber band and you then you just release it, the rubber band will uh, uh, come back to its original uh, shape because that is a physical property, it is a temporary change. Okay. Uh, and the chemical property, uh, because uh, uh, during this uh, process, one substance will react with another to undergo change in chemical composition and chemical change brings change in chemical properties of matter and as a result of chemical change we get new substances. So, that is why we call a chemical change a chemical reaction and uh, what about burning of a candle both physical and chemical change take place and you can think how does it happen in another session we will try to find out the answer for that and then what are the types of pure substances. So, on the basis of chemical composition, substances is classified either as elements or compounds. Now, we will see what is meant by element. Okay. And the scientist called Robert Boyle, he was the first scientist to use the term element in 1661. Then uh, uh, another scientist like uh, Antoine Laurent Lavoisier, that was in the year 1743 to 94, he was a French chemist. He was uh, first to find out a useful definition of an element. So, uh, how did he define an element? So, it is a basic form of matter, see that is the smallest part of a substance which uh, cannot be uh, broken down into simpler substances by chemical reaction. So, normally elements are divided into metals, non-metals and metalloids. So, we will see some properties of uh, metals, they, see these properties are shown by only metals, they have shining or luster. 
then they have got silvery grey golden yellow and uh, uh, golden yellow color okay and also they conduct heat and electricity they are ductile what is meant by ductility that is it can be drawn into thin wires and they can be uh, hammered into very thin sheets that property is known as malleable see like gold and all you can change it into very uh, see very very thin sheets and also they are sonorous uh, like it makes sound when you just uh, hit it and uh, we will look at some examples of metals gold silver copper iron sodium potassium and see one exception is there mercury is the only metal that is a liquid at room temperature remember that mostly they ask such questions for your exam now coming on to non metals see uh, they show some or all properties which are given here that is they show a variety of colors they do not conduct uh, heat and electricity or poor conductors of heat and electricity they are not dustrous sonorous or malleable it is opposite to that of metals now non metals examples are hydrogen oxygen iodine carbon bromine chlorine and all that and some elements uh, you know they show properties uh, uh, of both metals and non metals that is they are intermediate uh, sh when showing the properties of metals and non metals and these are called metalloids examples are boron silicon germanium and all that you know what is meant by compound uh, compound is a substance which is composed of two or more elements that is when two or more elements combine together they form a compound okay that is always in a fixed proportion see for example take the case of water h2o anywhere in the world when you combine two uh, atoms of hydrogen with one atom of oxygen we get one uh, molecule of water and uh, you know atoms combine to form molecules okay now uh, here uh, see the exa uh, the mixture you know some uh, table 2.2 you can see about mixtures and compounds like uh, mixtures uh, elements or compounds just uh, mix together to form mixture and no new compound is formed and the mixture has variable composition because it's not same always and uh, mixture shows properties of constituent substances see whatever is contained in the mixture uh, the properties are shown by the mixture and you can easily uh, separate the constituents by physical method whereas elements will react to form new compounds and always the composition um, uh, in this case is fixed and uh, the new uh, substance formed is having totally different properties from the parent substance and uh, you can uh, separate the constituent only by chemical or electrochemical reaction now we'll uh, finish the lesson with a small activity here so you can divide the class into two groups like give one group 5 gram of iron filings and uh, to another group 3 gram of sulfur powder in a china dish and what does group 1 do mix and crush iron filings and sulfur powder whereas group 2 mix and crush iron filings and sulfur powder heat it strongly and remove from the flame and let it cool and uh, for group 1 and 2 uh, check for uh, magnetism here uh, you know you are crushing the iron filings you know it process magnetic properties now bring a magnet here in the material and check if the metal in material is uh, attracted towards the magnet then you compare the texture and color of the material obtained by the groups then add carbon disulfide to one part of the ma uh, material obtained stir well filter and to the other part add dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hydrochloric acid now what observation can you see here and the material obtained uh, see uh, it has uh, you know both the groups uh, does it look the same which group uh, has obtained a material with magnetic properties can you separate the components of the mixture obtained and what happens in adding sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid and you get a gas and uh, uh, does the gas in both cases smell the same or different see uh, in the first group uh, the gas obtained is hydrogen which is colorless odorless and combustible combustible means burning and it is uh, not advised to do the combustion test for hydrogen in the class because you know the gas obtained you know it's highly risky and uh, as far as the second group is concerned you get uh, hydrogen sulfide gas you know first case it is hydrogen second case it is hydrogen sulfide which is a color gas uh, colorless gas with the smell of rotten eggs you know that is a characteristic smell of hydrogen sulfide it has the smell of rotten eggs uh, by which you can easily identify it anywhere when you do the test then uh, uh, you can see that the products obtained by both the groups uh, they show different properties starting materials are the same anyway group 1 uh, 
uh, has carried out the activity involving a physical change. See, first case it is physical change because even when you uh, crush iron filings into smaller pieces, each of the piece will still possess the same property of the parent. So, that is a physical change and the second case it is a chemical change and the material obtained by group 1 is a mixture of the two substances uh, that is uh, what were the two substances iron and sulphur and the properties of the mixture are uh, same as that of the constituents and the material obtained by group 2 that is a compound when you heat the two elements strongly we get a compound and the property of the newly formed uh, substance is entirely different and the composition is also the same throughout see all these uh, properties involve uh, the chemical uh, nature of the substance and the texture color these are all same throughout. So, now you can uh, summarize the physical and chemical changes of matter which is given as a table here matter is divided into pure substance and mixture you learned this table it is very useful for you pure substance is uh, divided again into elements and compounds elements cannot be broken down to simpler substance like copper oxygen and all that compounds they have fixed composition can be broken down into elements by chemicals or electrochemical reaction water sugar etc are examples then mixtures it has got no fixed composition homogeneous heterogeneous are the two types homogeneous it is uniform throughout it is non uniform heterogeneous example sugar in water salt in water all these we have learnt already heterogeneous sand and salt sugar and salt water and all that and another important thing I have to tell you is that what you have learnt is given as a summary here all of you should surely go through the summary because it is easily you know explained in simple uh, words or sentences here. So, I hope the uh, we are coming to an end of this uh, second chapter of class 9 NCRT I hope you followed this lesson clearly and uh, many of you are uh, watching the channel without subscribing it uh, do surely do not forget to subscribe to our channel because only if you subscribe and support uh, our channel we can bring you more uh, informative and uh, uh, we can cover all the lessons from NCRT only uh, if you support our channel. So, do uh, like share with your friends subscribe to our channel amazing world of science. So, to watch more such videos continue uh, looking for the updates and do press the bell icon uh, to uh, get notifications immediately as we post new videos. Thanks for watching.